what we're doing is looking at our I did a demo earlier machining a dupo light Lego base and I get questions asking me on the dimensions this is the my finished project that I machined as you can see it's a small board it's about five and a quarter by I think it's 12 inches somewhere close to that and it's a piece of one by six that I had laying around so I used it to do a temporary test because you don't want to build a huge board if you don't test it first to stick all these Lego projects on. Um, the problem was that it, when I originally machined it, it was way too tight. Uh, it, the actual Dupo Lego measurement for the diameter, I believe, is 2.69, uh, something like that. So anyway, this, this was my test project. And part of the problem I had was that the machine, the size of the bit, was not... 0.125. It's an eighth inch bit, but it's off by three thousandths. So I miked it and changed that number from 0.125 to 0.122. So I had the actual size of the bit. Um, that helps in getting an actual accurate cut on your machine. The Lego system is really a high tolerance. Uh, they make excellent parts that fit together tightly. And to do that, um, you have to have that kind of tolerance, and you don't have that with wood. Uh, this base is a little bit sloppy. When I made an exact measurement, it was too big. And keep in mind that wood expands and contracts with moisture. So if you want a base that's an extremely tight fit, that's not going to happen. Um, you can see that once you preview all the tool paths, you'll see I uh, make a nice little base with an edge. But this, again, is the practice base. The actual size of the one I wanted was... About 18 by 23 and I can't get a base that size from Lego I can get one larger than that but it doesn't fit on the table and smaller than that it doesn't fit on the table so my granddaughter had a table that needed a base that would fit the table uh, so that's what I started this whole project so let me show you um, a couple things in here we're gonna open or start a new file so that you can see exactly how I did this well, before we do that, we're going to look at our dimensions. So you come up to your dimension tool, right there on the left. You select it and use that dimension tool to measure these. So I'll zoom in so that you can see accurately the size that we have. Now these are all square, so I used my, uh, you'll see an array tool later to actually make this, and I'll make one for you quickly. Before we do that, we want to steal our dimensions from the one that worked and go from there. So that dimension is too large, so I'm going to reduce the size of the text height to about a quarter inch so that you can see it on the screen, otherwise it's blown off the screen. So if you want to make notes, this is 0.341. Now the actual size we need to measure from the Dupo Lego is 0.371. I reduced it by three hundredths to allow for the paint and the varnish and all that to make a tighter fit. Because the other way, at machining at 0 0.371, it didn't fit. So that's my dimension for our diameter for my circle. The other measurement that we're going to need is how far apart are these using the array tool. So I'm going to measure from left to right, and you'll see that where I measured at. Notice the start of one circle to the start of the next. So that gives me an offset measurement of 0.629. So I need that dimension in my array tool. Now we're going to check. We're going to change from horizontal to vertical measurements so that you can see what my vertical measurement is from the same distance, from the bottom to the bottom of the next circle. And it should be, since this is square, exactly 0.629. So that worked. And uh, those are the key measurements that you're going to need to make a table. If you want to tighten it up a little bit, you can go to 0 0.351. But I found this works good. Um, the pieces fit. Uh, my granddaughter is only um, 26 months, so it gives her a little, it's easier for her to, to put them on there. Let's put it that way. So we'll start a new project. And I'll show you how I did this. I created a circle. In this case, I didn't build the offset. Um, on the edge of it just for this demonstration. So there's my circle 
and I'm going to use my array tool to expand it. And I'll make a couple mistakes here because I didn't calculate out what 0.621 into the dimensions up and down would be, but you can use your tools quickly to figure that out. Uh, 36 rows and 26 rows was for another project, but the spacing's right. And if you look at the spacing, um, you know, it's about an inch apart. So I'm going to use an inch, and obviously it's not an inch apart. It's 0.629, <laughs> so I was off a little bit. And you'll see that when I hit my copy. But if you see the rows and the columns, the columns are left to right, and the rows are, are bottom to top or top to bottom. And you can see that's too short, so I just undo it and increase it. Let's double it. See how that does. Uh, let's see. Oh, look. We're only two this way and one that way. Except that we're not expanding our vision field. So you'll see here in a second that, yeah, two and one drops it down to 23 and 8. So 23 and 8, that looks like it'll work. So we undo our model array and do it again. Oops. So now we zoom out and see, well, it wasn't just one above, it was five above. So I've got to drop this down four more, which will give me 19. Undo it and do it again. And there it is. So if you do a little math beforehand, you won't have to do that. But honestly, how long did that take? <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to do a pocket cut is what we should have done. But I didn't. I did a profile two path and that didn't work. As you'll see shortly, it doesn't isn't the tool path I wanted. So I gotta put a box around it, and that's what I did. And that box is gonna give me boundaries to cut within, but I needed that for not the profile tool path, but for the pocket tool path. So I picked the wrong tool. Sorry, wasted a few seconds of your time, but it's a learning experience for all of us. You notice those are not grouped together, so I'm going to have to group, pick them all at once. Or I can hit the shift key and pick them individually, but that's another big waste of time. I'm going to make sure my tool is right. It is. It's at 0.122. And again, I get that measurement from miking it. And the 0.25 is a cleanup tool path I was doing recently. You only really want it at 0.1. Half the depth is really the rule of thumb, but I found with an eighth inch tool, you can, in soft pine, you can actually go down 0.1. And the cutting path is 50%, because if you think about it, when you first start your tool path, it cuts 100% and it does it without slowing down for some reason. That's uh, something I wish the software would fix, but they haven't got to that yet. Here we go. Let's do it and see what it looks like. And it won't work, as you'll see. It leaves these little bitty tiny, because it did it on the inside of all of them. So if I preview the tool path, you can see it. Oops. Let's do it again. So even the great master, which is not me, by the way, makes mistakes. Everybody does. So wrong tool path. Let's try again. Cancel that and get the right one which is the pocket tool path. Check and make sure the tool is set right. It is. And then calculate it, reset it, and preview it. Oh, forgot to reset. Oh, I did all of them. So let's get rid of that one that didn't uh, work in the first place. So get it out of the way. Reset it and preview it again. And there you go. That's what we want. And if you notice, there's some little blips along the edges there. That's because I didn't make the square go all the way to the outside. Uh, and I should have, but I didn't. This is just a quick demo, so I didn't figure you'd mind too much. But there you go. That's your measurements. Excuse me. Dimensions or measurements, and uh, or measurements, if you will. <laughs> and you save it, and you're take it to your machining and machine it. This one took about, because I did an extra cut on the outside, it took about 30 minutes to machine. Uh, it took about four hours to do the whole tabletop on the other one. 
And then I'd use a wi little wire brush from my Dremel to clean up all the little burrs, and that worked fine. I used a sander on top, as you saw before, to take off some of the burrs. And then used a little wire wheel to clean up the rest of it and sprayed it with blue paint spray paint and it worked fine. She had a lot of fun with it. So it's still having fun with it. So it was an early Christmas present. So that's how you do it. If you got any questions, let me know and have a Merry Christmas and enjoy making projects on your CNC.